I'm going to leave that in. Welcome. Bitcoin for humans. So today I want to talk about something that came up at the Bitcoin by the Beach session that we held last week. We had a group of people around. It was great fun. We just talked about Bitcoin. We sat out at City Beach in Perth. The sunset. Beautiful. Like, I'd love you to come along to the next one. Anyway, one of the things that came up was about seizure resistance so like what is what does it mean to have a seizure resistant asset and how that how might that play out in the real world in comparison to other things that you might own and is is there any sort of incentive or thing that we might worry about in terms of how that plays out in society so importantly the point of seizure resistance in bitcoins is a property of bitcoin and what it says is that nobody can take your bitcoin from you without your consent now, as always, consent matters and can really change the arrangement and, and how things are. But to, to put some to meat on those bones, what we're going to do is we're going to see about how the production values of Bitcoin for humans have just been ratcheted up. And we're going to skip over to this digital whiteboard. So here I am now in the corner. Fantastic. All right. We're going to meet Billy. Now, Billy has got a balance sheet. Now, Billy, he's a nice guy. He's got a little flame of hair at the top there he's in his 40s he's done all right by himself you know he he went through school and university and he got into a job and he's put money away and he's got a million dollars in his super or pension fund you know he's also invested a little bit in stocks he's got a few bonds he's got a little bit of bitcoin now billy's a great guy he listens to people when they say not your keys not your coin so he took that bitcoin off an exchange and put it in a wallet it's just not a phone at the moment maybe a little bit much to put on a phone for 10 grand but you know each to their own and he's also got a mortgage so he's paid off about 200k out of his 1 million as i can see i wrote on this whiteboard earlier now the important thing here is we look at this and we say, oh, Billy, good work. Good work. You've done all right there. You're in a decent position. I'm not sure you've got much to worry about. But what we might want to do is just say, we're only looking at kind of one half of what's going on here. And let's just flesh out what the liability side of this looks like. So whilst Billy does own a set of assets in his mind, some of these are actually the liability of a different institution, which might change the arrangement of what Billy actually owns. So when we say that Billy has a million dollars in his, his pension fund, what's kind of really happening is there's actually a pension fund that has Billy's million dollars, and Billy has an IOU to the pension fund that there's a million dollars in there with his name on it. Now, this is a common pattern that happens across um, most financial services. So similarly with the stocks, his stock broker may have that IOU. Billy just has an IOU against the money that the stock broker holds in the stocks, which again are actually custodied somewhere else. Uh, similarly with the bonds, uh, the mortgage is actually the bank. So again, like he's paid off 200 grand in principal on a million dollar house. And the, that mortgage itself as a loan is backed by the house. So the interesting thing there is again, even though he lives in this house and he talks about it as though he owns it, what he actually owns is the IOU for the bank and the right to live in that house. But that can change if something happens to that financial arrangement. Now, the one thing that does stand out on this list is the Bitcoin, because as we said, Billy did the right thing. He understood not your keys, not your coins. He got his coins and put them in his keys. Fantastic. Great work, Billy. We're all cheering for you and we hope it works out. Now, the only problem that the Billy's got is it's, it's Bob Dylan's fault, really, if we think about it, because Bob Dylan said that times they are a changing. And I think what we need to look at is to say, in terms of seizure resistance, the particular person in power on a particular day, and this does change, you know, if you don't like the current um US president. Maybe you liked the previous one and you don't like this one. Maybe you really didn't like the previous one and you do like this one. But these things do change and we vote for stuff and we flip flop and we go backwards and forwards. And like, that's just kind of how messy human society is. So, you know, it's worth remembering that the person in charge has power and the person in charge can change. And when that changes, the way that power is used can change as well and sometimes it doesn't always work out well so in this instance this guy's in charge is the man with the the suit and the the bowler hat and a, a little tie and 
an impressively large wing collar on his suit. Now, he's said that he doesn't like people that are, broadly speaking, men with a blank face and a, a little flame of hair. Now, it's an odd prejudice to have there, Mr. Bowler hat. But these things do happen. So, for instance, it could be geographical, it could be you're in a particular group, or it could be a particular action that's taken. So, let's say you're in Cyprus at the wrong time when there was a bail-in for the banking system. Your money was seized and used to bail out a banking system. <laughs> your only crime that you committed was to be in Cyprus and to have your money in a bank. You know, that can catch a lot of people unaware. You know, if you happen to be in the online gambling industry or the sex work industry in the US prior to Operation Choke Point, you were debanked and had your financial services removed because it was deemed immoral or questionable in the eyes of who? I don't know. I don't know if those are really your vote for that. <laughs> um, you know, similarly, right now, if you're a Russian citizen, you know, falling under sanctions from the rest of the world, a lot of your wealth could be destroyed. Now, we're not talking about you know, Putin and the oligarchs here. We're just talking about regular citizens that are going to get caught up in that. And they're people that we should feel bad for. You know, that's the, the person is not the government that they operate under. You know, similarly, if you were in Canada and you happen to donate $100 to the wrong protest that happened recently, well, then you could have had all of your banking and financial services removed. So let's just have a look at like what the impact would be on Billy's balance sheet, who, let's say a moment ago, he looked like he had no worries. So the first thing we notice with Billy is that his, his smile is gone. He's unhappy now and he's, he's not waving anymore. Like he's, he's thumbs down and he's thumbs down for a good reason because he's now realized that his super a pension fund that he thought he had for a million dollars wasn't actually his. What he had was an IOU and the IOU just got cancelled by the pension fund because his financial services have just been revoked under sanctions. You know, the stocks that he thought he had are no longer there because he didn't actually own stocks. He actually owned an IOU to a stockbroker who's now been advised to not honour that. Similarly, he thought he owned a house, but he actually owned an IOU from a bank who've been told that they don't have to honour that anymore. Now, all of a sudden, Billy's lost his $200,000 of principal. The mortgage has been cancelled, so I guess he doesn't owe $800,000, but he is about to lose his house. And this is what would happen if your financial services get cancelled. Now, luckily, he does have one bright line there, which is the Bitcoin. And so the point here is that Billy owned his Bitcoin outright. He had control over it. So when this sweeping change was passed, he didn't he didn't lose that. Everybody else, they get a letter, they say, look, we don't want to be on the wrong side of this new legislation, so we're just going to cancel everything. We need to de-risk, and this is how it how it happens. It's not that the bank is necessarily out there intending to be evil. It's that there's now a new law that comes in and gets put on the books, and they have to oblige that and they can't be seen to increase their risk by trying to fight on your behalf so they get cancelled so he's lost access to everything except his bitcoin in this instance now i think what we need to do here is look at what that really means in society and let's really acknowledge that there's kind of two options of what can play out here is that we can take Take our wealth. Uh, I know money and wealth can be dirty words for some people. But if you just considered it as like, you know, your wealth is the accumulation of your life's work and what you've been paid today and all that time that you've sacrificed for that wealth, where are you going to put it? And is it possible that the current person in charge could ever change and that you might find yourself on the wrong side of a changed political party or a particular whim of the day that you would want all of the accumulated benefits of your life work to be taken in a moment without even a question being asked of you or you being part of that process. For me, I would quite like to be able to say no, you can't take that. Now, I recognise that in particular circumstances saying no might then mean that there are other problems that you would have to deal with but i think we really should be looking at this and saying okay like well which world do you want to live in do we want to live in the world where somebody can arbitrarily take 
everything that a person has ever earned and accumulated at will because they don't agree with them. Bearing in mind that the person that makes that decision can change. And sometimes it will be the person you like and sometimes it will be the person you dislike. Or would we prefer to live in the world in which that decision cannot be made at a whim and you have to acknowledge and consent to what is happening? Now, for me, consent makes all the difference. But I think that's a question that's worth asking yourself. Like, Which world would you rather live in? The one where the central entity can just freeze your wealth or the one where you have to be part of that conversation? So with that, I'll leave you with that today. And I'll just say, if you want to learn more, head over to bitcoinforhumans.com. Okay, peace.